In this part of the lesson, we'll be showing you how to do type along a path. But before we do that, we need to let you know just what a path is. Photoshop has two kinds of, of ways that it works with, with drawing. One is pixel-based. So, for example, if I grab my elliptical marquee tool and I draw a circle and I tell it I'd like to fill it with the foreground color, I will deselect or Command-D. Now, if I take my zoom tool and I click and hold, let's take a look at the edge. Now you can see how everything is, is based on individual dots, on pixels. And the reason it fools you into thinking it's a smooth circle is that there's some shading going on along the edges. That's called anti-aliasing. So I'm going to clear that out and I'm going to come down here and get one of the shape tools and up here I can I'm going to fill it with black and I'm I'm going to draw the same circle. All right. Now the difference is is that has created a vector shape. This is mathematically defined. So again, if I get my zoom tool and I zoom in, it will redraw the screen as much as it needs until it can no longer do it. If I were to print this on a 2400 dot per inch printer, uh, it would just be absolutely smooth because it's mathematically defined. So that's, that's the difference between the two. So you have a number of different shape tools over here. You have a rectangle tool, a rounded rectangle tool, an ellipse tool, a polygon tool, a line tool, and a custom shape tool. Now, each of these have options, all right? First of all, we can define them as a shape, or we can define them as a path, or as pixels, all right? A shape is what we've done right here. I'm going to delete this layer, and let's change it to a path. A path is just a mathematically defined path. In fact, you don't see a new layer over here at all, but over here in the paths panel, you see that that shape is actually a path. All right. Now if I click into another uh, or click off the path, it, it goes away. Um, so that's a path. I can get rid of the path by just clicking on it and hitting delete in the paths panel. Back to my shape tool again, I can do pixels, which just basically fills it with paint. So that's the same as if I'd gotten my rectangular marked key and, and did a fill. So uh, it, it's pixel paint, not mathematically defined anymore. And we'll get rid of that. All right, so let's show you what, uh, let's, let's, uh, let's go back to shape, because that's what we basically will be talking about in this lesson. And we'll show you each of the shapes and how to control them and what they do. So we have the rectangle tool. It's Shortcut is U. I think I'll collapse the properties panel here. And I will draw a rectangle. 
Now it's set to fill with black and it's set to stroke with with uh, nothing. You see that little red line through it. If it were if it did have a stroke, it would be three points in size. 72 points make an inch. All right. And then we have uh, other options. So let me change to a different fill color. All right. So over here, I can change to a different stroke color. And I can increase that stroke's size. I can also define what kind of a stroke it is and if I wanted rounded corners or angular corners and we can align it on the center or on the outside or the inside. This gives us our uh, dimension in pixels. So if I wanted that to be exactly um, 1920 pixels, I could do that by 1200 pixels. I could do that. Of course, we can get our move tool and, and move it around. So that is the rectangle tool, shape tool. The next one is your rounded rectangle, and it works the same way, except you can define how rounded in pixels you want it to be. So if I wanted to change that to 64 pixels and draw a new one, you can see that that has a more rounded edge. The third one down is the ellipse tool. We can draw any shape of an ellipse that we want if we hold our shift key down, that will constrain it to a perfect circle. The polygonal tool lets you draw uh, a, a polygon shape and you can define the number of sides up here. And of course it's height and width. Um, you can even uh, do things like a star, so it, it bends in at the middle. So if we wanted a five-sided star, there we go. The line tool lets you draw straight lines, and you also can uh, do arrowheads on either the start or the end and you can define um, how big the arrowheads are. So if I want it to be slightly bigger, I could I could do that. Um, and how what how how heavy your your line is is the weight. <laughs> of the line. We don't need one 142 pixels thick. Let's try one that's four pixels thick. There we go. All right. The custom shape tool lets you choose from a number of different shapes. So if you needed a registered trademark symbol and so forth, and we'll teach you how to import and export shapes on this. Uh, you have a, a little down triangle here. You'll notice that there's a lot more shapes. If I click all and say, okay, I can grab at this corner and show you all the shapes that come with Photoshop. So those are the shape tools. I'm going to go into my shape tools and I'm going to pick one of the tools here. 
And instead of making it a shape, this time I'm going to just make it a path. I'm going to hold my shift key down and constrain it to a perfect circle. And there I have my path. So you see over here it says work path in the paths panel. Now if I grab my text tool, you'll notice that the text tool remains like we've normally seen it and seen it until just getting over the path itself and it changes and then if I go inside it changes again. Well this means that we can type along a path so if I click and choose my font and everything there we go all right, and if I come over here, you'll notice that the path name has changed to the text. If I click off the path, you don't see the path line anymore. The path line is non-printable. Um, so it, it's just there as, as a visual reference. If you click on the path, it'll, it, will, it will show. Now to work with this, you need your path selection tool. And so with that path selection tool refined, I can do a couple of different things. For example, if I wanted to drag the path or the text on the inside of the path, I can do that or drag it back out. This little dot on this side shows how much text is showing along the path and this little line just right in front of the beginning allows you to change the starting point. Of the path. All right. Let me get rid of this path and we'll do another. So I will type, but this time when I grab my text tool, I'm going to go in and just click inside. Again, I've overfilled it, so you see the little plus in the corner. I can resize that shape. I can come in here and select and resize the text by using the scrubby, the scrubby slider. Um, center it in there. Again, if I click off the path, uh, the path line will disappear so you can just see what's left. Of course if you have more smaller text it fills the shape a little bit better. Um, so that's typing on a path and, and typing in a shape. So let's do something fun. I'm going to go in and choose custom shape tool and I'm going to pick the copyright symbol here. Press enter on my 10 keypad and I'm going to make it a shape and I think I'd like to fill it with a deep red and I'll hold down my shift key to constrain it. So there we have a shape. Now I'm going to get my text tool and come when the cursor changes on type along a path, I'm going to put copyright by my name all the way around it. Then, if I select all of that text, 
and I hold my shift and my option key down, I can move the baseline of that text up so that when I click off of it, this is what I have. Anyway, I think you get the idea of the power of being able to type along a path.